joined by the former Liberal Democrat Minister Norman Baker. Thank you very much for coming in, Norman, too. Uh, Liam, let's just start with you, because one of the big things, and we predicted it this time yesterday, that that fiscal statement was going to be delayed. It looks as though Rishi Sunak has bought himself some time. Indeed. Just wanted to start by welcoming my old chum, Andrew Pearce, to <laughs> the GB News family, finally. Thank you. Going to do fantastically well, as uh, viewers and listeners can already see. Interesting thing happened yesterday. I've I've got this statement from the OBR, which you can see now, if we can put it up on the screen for GB News viewers, but I'll read out anyway, of course. The Office of Budget Responsibility, had our forecast been published on October the 31st, which, of course, was the plan, that Halloween statement, it would have been based on market determinants, including for gas prices and gilt yields, from the early to middle part of October. Postponing the date to November the 17th means that we will take a later window for these market prices. What does that gobbledygook mean in English? What it means... Rosie, is that because gas prices are coming down, because borrowing costs for the government are coming down, they've come down extremely sharply since before last weekend, when it looks as if there'd still be a fractious fight at the top of the Conservative Party for number 10. They've come down from 4.1%, 4.2%, that's the amount the government must pay every year to borrow money for 10 years, down to 335 3.6%. That's a huge reduction, half a percentage point for an advanced big industrial economy like the UK. This sort of thing usually happens in sort of, you know, small Latin American countries, uh, these big market movements. If the government is spending a lot less money on debt interest, tens of billions of pounds more at these kind of levels, and if gas prices are lower and they're falling, that completely changes the public finances because that energy price cap's cheaper to deliver and we spend less money on debt interest, and that could give Rishi Sunak a bit more room for manoeuvre. And with that being too technical, Liam, why has that interest rate fallen so sharply? It's a combination of global factors, Andrew. Um, US house prices are rising less fast than they previously were. So the US economy looks as if it's slowing down. The dollar weakens, the pound gets a bit stronger. It makes government bonds more attractive if you're buying them in pounds, but also because, you know, not the end, but certainly as calming down of the fractious conservative politics and, frankly, Rishi Sunak and uh, uh, Jeremy Hunt at number 11 ditching and or looking to ditch some of these really expensive fiscal policies. And one of those, and it is a 2019 manifesto commitment, may be, may be the triple lock. The triple lock, of course, is that the basic state pension received by 11 million U UK pensioners is uprated every year, either by 2.5% or the average rate of and average earnings increase or by the rate of inflation. Of course, the rate of inflation now is 10.1%. Uprating the basic state pension by 10.1%, and then, of course, that increase lasts forever. You can't then reduce it next year. Is a huge fiscal commitment. It may be, it may be, the Tories are calculating. A lot of those 11 million pensioners will vote Tory anyway. And it may be better in terms of the taxpayer getting bang for their buck to target additional help to particularly vulnerable pensioners mm -hmm. on things like heating, on things like immobility, sickness, other vulnerabilities, rather than a 10.1% increase across the board for some pensioners, just some who don't actually need the money. We're going to try and get clarity from Nadim Zahawi on pensions. He's coming on the programme in about five minutes' time. In the meantime, Norman, in the studio with us, Rishi Sunak, first time at Prime Minister's Questions yesterday. He said difficult decisions to come. We got a glimpse yesterday of what they were going to be. Yes, he's, he's uh, lining up uh, his MPs for some unpleasant medicine, I think, in, uh, on the 17th of next month. He's right, I think, to delay the fiscal statement. I mean, the idea that he comes into Prime Ministerial Office and then within a, a matter of days has to have a, a major statement is not sensible. So taking time with Jeremy Hunt to prepare this properly is a sensible idea. I have to say that, uh, picking up on Liam's point about the triple lock, I find it pretty indefensible you can give pensions over 10% increase. People who, are, in some cases, are very, very well off indeed. There are poor pensioners who need to be helped, but there are plenty of pensioners who don't need help. There are people in the south of Spain who are getting winter fuel allowance still from this government. That cannot be right in any shape or form. If there are difficult decisions to be made, let's make them fairly. And what we've seen over the last 10, 20 years, actually, has been helping pensioners at the expense sometimes of younger people in particular because pensioners vote, they tend to vote Conservative. Now, you know, my, my, I've got a daughter and other people have got children... This generation coming mm. through is going to be the first generation which is going to be poorer than their parents. That cannot be right. So we need to have a, a recalculation as to who's going to bear the brunt of this. 
This, this other, the other news this morning was that Shell came up with record profits again mm -hmm. for this quarter. I think it was 26 billion or something absolutely enormous. You know, why is there no proper windfall tax on the oil companies to try and help with the public finances in, in that way? Uh, why is non-dom status not being closed down, that loophole? You know, there are avenues open to the Prime Minister to take to get public finances back on a, an even footing without penalising ordinary people. Don't they say, Liam, that the non -dom, having non-doms here brings in more money than if you brought in a, a policy to ban non-doms? They do. That's been the Treasury's argument and successive <coughs> governments' arguments mainly Conservative governments, uh, for many, many the, years. The Blair Brown government never got rid of it. They, they talked about a lot about it before they were first in power, and then when they got into office and saw the actual numbers, they didn't. We'll have to see, won't we? Of course, there's an extra layer of sensitivity here because of uh, the new Prime Minister's wife was a non-dom and then she wasn't breaking any laws. She was paying all tax due in the UK, but, of course, she wasn't paying tax on her worldwide income, which meant she could you know, award herself dividends in different countries and so on. Just going back to the triple lock point, isn't it interesting? Here we've got Norman Baker, mm. former Lib Dem uh, minister, compassionate guy, if I may say so. I think the times are changing in terms of that basic state pension. Of course we've got pension of poverty in this country. Mm. Of course we have. But it may make more sense to move away from that cherished beverage principle of a universal uh, benefit for all pensioners... Uh, and move to more targeted help, maybe targeted by council tax bans or, or other characteristics. Targeting or means testing, as we call it, is always very, very difficult. There are hard cases that fall either side of the line, but it does seem pretty indefensible mm. to spend so much money when hard-working families won't be getting pay rises anywhere near 10%. Yeah, yeah. Some of them may not get any pay rises at all, but he is breaking a 2019 manifesto pledge if he does move away from the triple lock, and that is, he says, you know, his mandate is that 2019 manifesto. Yeah. I think that's why, on the same day, in the last sort of 12, 24 hours, we've seen uh, a, a, a determination to maintain the ban on fracking, which was a 2019 manifesto pledge, at the same time as moving away from another 29 manifesto pledge so they could sort of leaven the mix.